now we talk about 11 signs that you are in the dark night of the soul. The time which appears a short time before awakening. A short hint, you must not fulfill all the 11 aspects. It is enough when you find maybe six or seven at you and maybe you also have additionally ones which I have not mentioned it. Because first of all, I took my own experience to collect these 11 aspects and to present it now. And secondly, I also additionally read about it and feed the information a bit with knowledge from philosophy. The very first aspect is that you lose your interest in almost everything, actually in everything. This is not so different to an ordinary depression. So one should be careful here. I produced another video to differentiate an ordinary depression from the dark night of the soul. You can find it under the link. You lose your interest in everything and everything seems to you like kind of unreal, not real. Or if you even have been connected to your higher self for very short times or had out of body experience or other stuff from very high spiritual quality and you fall out again because you are not fully enlightened, you're just on the path, it even more appears hopeless to you and everything seems useless and unreal and you almost see that this is kind of an illusion. But the problem is you also don't see the light. As you know from religious or philosophy teachings, that also people have the light inside of them. All people, even those ones who are not consciously striving for enlightenment, in those people it is even deeper hidden. They have it more difficult to reach. Their path will be longer, will take a few more lives. But you even can't see the light in the very developed people. You don't see the good thing. You just see, oh, there is this illusion and this pulls you more down and down and down. And that's the problem. And this leads to the next problem. You become kind of lazy. This is just a result of that you are not interested in things anymore because when you are not interested, you're also not interested to do things. And so you become kind of lazy in doing bodily, physically work. But you also, when you try, and that's the next problem, when you try to concentrate on mentally work, you will also see that it doesn't work anymore. In my example, I'm an author and I write books. And since I'm in the dark night, I have lots of blockades in writing. I took the laziness and the lack of concentration together because both are things which destroy your work, which destroy your hobbies, which destroy that you can do something. You're then very lame. But the last aspect, the lack of concentration, also leads to the third point. And this is one of the worst things, maybe, because meditation doesn't work anymore for you in this time. Of course, after enlightenment, you will be in meditation for the rest of your life, all around the clock. Whatever you do or you not do, you always will be connected. Absolutely. But now, the short time before awakening in the dark night, you feel like absolute disconnected. Like really meditation, you try everything. And this brings you in even a greater hopelessness because you think, oh, you are so separated from the whole thing you had maybe earlier very good connectedness through meditation and suddenly it will not work anymore and this causes sorrows and you think you have done something wrong or you're on the wrong path and so you make maybe you think about making pressure meditation has to work i have to do certain things and you make pressure on you and this throws you even more in the dark night this pressure also with the other points which i have mentioned it when, for example, you're lazy, then you make pressure, you must do more or so. But how to handle the dark night? I will make another video. And because meditation doesn't work, this brings us to the fourth point. You try to solve the problem and you prefer monotony. You prefer silent places like nature or you stay in the house. 
when you have a silent house, when you have not so many loud neighbors, you prefer monotony and you are not bored. You're never bored in the monotony. It's the opposite. But that's the next point. The monotony is the part when earlier people with the dark night went into the desert. You can find about desert stories in all scriptures from all religions when people went into desert. This is a picture for this one thing for monotony which you suddenly have in the dark night when you are very close to your higher self or to God or to enlightenment or whatever you name it from whatever culture it comes. This is this aspect, this part. And now let's come to the fifth point, the point with boredom. You are never bored. It's the opposite. Your time appears to run faster. Also, in the last time before you went in this dark night, you felt that your day should have 28 hours instead of the 24. It's not enough for you. And it doesn't matter if you have to do lots of things or if you relax, it is never enough time. And now it's even worse. It, it runs even faster. Even if you don't have to do anything and just sit around, and even if you have negative thoughts from the dark night, but you love to sit around in your desert, in your monotony, the desert, this could also be a forest or your apartment, whatever. You suffer from other emotions, maybe from anxieties or from sadness or so. But boredom can't really have any effect on you because your time seems to be very rare. This comes also because you started to look behind the illusion that we are here and this is the only dimension this is an illusion because there is a much bigger and more interesting spiritual dimension and you know that and you look all behind that and now you know that this time here in the body is very limited and your consciousness wants to develop because it wants to have the union with the higher self so that you become the person who you really are and that you find your purpose and that you have enough time to fulfill your purpose for the rest of the time as long as you are in this body in christianity this purpose is called imago dei an image of god that means not that you look like god that means the image which god has made from you the purpose which really fits to you is already kind of programmed or given even before you were born. But you can also explain it in different ways with different cultures, different religions, philosophies. This was just an example. And I have already mentioned it. And this is our sixth point, negative thoughts, negative emotions. So you sit there with your negative thoughts, with your hopelessness about the illusion and what to do. And, you know, sometimes you even think a lot in the dark night but it's just it's not like in a normal depression that your thoughts are wandering around to lots of topics you are focused on a topic you are focused on your path to enlightenment because not everyone comes in the dark night the normal the normal people which are not interested in enlightenment they have ordinary depressions but when you are in a dark night it's actually it's a great compliment you are one of the very few people which are kind of chosen. Yeah, you've developed in previous lives very far through lots of meditation and other stuff. But before the full enlightenment comes, you have to go to, let's name it hell in religions, they call it hell, and dark night. It's actually, I don't think it's like hell. It doesn't really appear so bad. Like they describe hell. Hell is for me more when I'm entangled in everyday life and try to adjust to normal people. And maybe you know the situations. You try to adjust to ordinary people, to the society, and you feel that something inside of you is not comfortable with that. But you do it, and then you feel not well because you have this darkness. And the darkness wants you actually to develop to another thing. In my first dark night, and also John of the Cross described it this way, it is more emotional. You go more for emotions. And in the last dark night, emotions are not that problematic anymore. It is more about negative thoughts, very strong negative thoughts, but you can bear them. It always comes easy enough that you can handle it. 
even if there are suicide thoughts and I struggled with them in the last time, they are there and they are like everything doesn't make any sense anymore. And the thoughts want to tell you that it does not make sense. You are on your deepest point and you really should stop it and kill yourself. But the true death is the ego death, is enlightenment. And so don't do false things here. The problem is that suicide is just the death of the body. You kill the body, but then you wander and you get another body and, you know, reincarnation. And so you, you don't come out of this. It's, it's really very hard. In my whole story, I talked about this suicide force, which I had again and again in my life. But in the dark night, they were even stronger on the one hand. But on the other hand, I could also see that they are not from me. And that was the greatest thing. I really could see there are these negative thoughts, which even try to convince me to suicide. And on the other hand, I could see these are just thoughts. This is not belonging to me. And that was the great development in this dark night. But I will go deeper into it in the video about the phases of dark night. The seventh point is higher sensitivity. You are generally highly sensitive, right? You suffered all the last years from that. And I know also other people in dark night, they had the same problem. When dark night comes, you seem to be even more sensitive than you have ever been before. It's the same sensitivity, it doesn't grow really but sounds from your neighbors or from other sources appear to you more difficult to handle, appear to you like a burden, and sometimes even throw you in more negative thoughts because you start to think negative about the neighbors. How could they be so unsensitive? How could they throw with the doors? And you blame these loud people. But it doesn't bring you out of the dark night. It's just a trap. For me also, I hate it when the people on the balcony are drunken and talk so loud and laugh so loud. And you absolutely suffer from that. Because it's not just any noise. It is you have values about purpose, about the sense of life or sense in general. And the people which drink alcohol appear to you suddenly like doing something useless. And so again, you start to judge just because they are partying, which you maybe have also done earlier in the same life, but suddenly you're not interested anymore. And they are going on your nerves suddenly. You have another perspective from the dark night on that. And this leads also automatically to the eighth point. You avoid people. Not really all people. When you have spiritual friends, you sometimes or maybe also are interested to visit one. Not too much. Not too many people. Just one or two maximum. But you avoid most of the people because you don't really feel understood. You in your dark night feel also sometimes even don't understood from spiritual people. Even you don't feel understood from enlightenment. When you know one enlightenment, you suddenly also avoid him or her, maybe your mentor or your guru, because you are in a phase in between. You are still in human consciousness and have not reached the fully higher consciousness yet. But the ordinary people with their human consciousness, the more than 95% of all people don't understand you because you are further, you are closer to higher consciousness and they don't know about that, that such thing even exists, they don't know. So you feel not understood from this 95% and there are less than 5% which have been gone through the dark night. But this is maybe for some of them a few years ago and they have forgotten it and they are now enlightened. It. And they also, when they are enlightened, I have the same problem with my mentor. You don't feel in the dark night, you don't feel understood anymore from this person also. So you have this both directions. This per, people, all the people which are not striving for enlightenment and that are the most ones, 
and which all the years don't really understood you, but suddenly you also don't feel understood from your mentor anymore. But this is just a short time. It's not that, you know, you can keep this friendship and you can keep this uh, people in your life. And it's nothing, and all the people, also these ones who, who are not interested in enlightenment, maybe they will understand you later. But some will also go, others will come. You will see. We don't really have an influence all the time. But the point is now, in most cases, you avoid them. That's a big sign that you are in the dark night. Also in ordinary depressions, some people have social anxieties and so on and avoid people. But this time, there's a small difference. It could be that you have more self-confidence. When people in an ordinary depression have social anxieties, this is often connected with a lack of self-confidence. But when you are on your path and you have certain knowledge and you have meditated enough, you have enough self-confidence. Normally, it can also be that the dark night reduces it. That is also part of the dark night sometimes. But even then, you have still more self-confidence than most of the people because you have a high target. And this gives you a strong self-confidence normally. But also it can be pulled down when you are too much entangled with the ordinary people, with the normal people, and you work too much, even if you feel that there is the dark night and you can't work anymore and something is stopping you and you still work too much and hang around in your work with ordinary people, this can pull you also very down because you feel very different suddenly. There is something dark inside of you and you don't want to watch it. You try to suppress it and you always feel different that you are not so like the others. And it can also become worse when there are people which blame you for that, which really say to you, you are so different. Why can't you be normal like all the others? So in upbringing, parents do so with the children, but maybe in work also other people can do. Very unconscious people can speak to you like this. And this pulls you in when you are even in the dark night. And this is very, a very depressed time. And it pulls you even more down. Yeah, I'm not good enough. And then maybe old patterns come up and really also attack your self-confidence, which actually you, it grows. It grew all the time on your path until now. And suddenly old patterns appear and try to destroy it. And then you are falling down and feel like a small child not just sensitive but also hurtable i have made a video about the solutions but also here just follow the dark night because it leads you to enlightenment not adjust to the ordinary people so far just maybe you can try to reduce your job and when you prefer monotony and kind of desert then better choose this as often as you can instead of hanging around with ordinary people which pull you down which say you are not normal enough you're not good enough why are you so spiritual why are you so different because this pulls you even more down and brings maybe also suicide thoughts so be very careful here and when you want to avoid people then avoid them reduce them but more about this in the other video point number nine your spiritual abilities also disappear it's not just that relationships reduce work reduces concentration reduces meditation reduces also the spiritual besides meditation also the other spiritual when you have spiritual abilities suddenly you feel a lack here it could also be that you even think that all this spiritual experience you had until now is also useless and all the spiritual stuff is crap even if you have an ability, this is the worst case. But in most cases, people don't think that bad. But people just wonder why it doesn't work anymore. Some people could manifest things and suddenly it doesn't work. You go through the city and it doesn't work anymore. That you manifest here and there small things. Some people could even see, see or heal things or others. And also this doesn't work for this time of dark night for this time before spiritual awakening the absolute enlightenment the last step and just if you don't have any very special spiritual ability like healing or so if you have just a good intuition a good you can also say people say sixth sense right if you also had this 
and nothing uh, so abstract thing. Um, suddenly you feel like even you have lost this very simple thing like intuition and you feel really lost and lonely because all the last years you didn't feel lonely when you were alone. Maybe some feel even more lonely when they are among people, but suddenly you really feel lonely and lost and separated. And when you lose your spiritual abilities, this gives you even more hopelessness because your spiritual abilities again and again remind you that there is something more and there, that this is not just this material world. There must be something more because why do these things happen? Why can't, can I heal? Why do things like this happen? This is wow, this is a wonder. And it's always reminded you there is something more and suddenly this doesn't work anymore. And then it really pulls you even more down in the dark night than the dark night itself. And the 10th aspect is a bodily aspect. In the dark night, you can feel certain, and this is very different from person to person, you can feel certain bodily problems, which you have not had before the dark night, never in your life maybe. Sometimes you can also repeat things which you already had in your life, and now they are more extreme than before. For example, I feel a burning. I feel that my body burns. I don't know why, but I'm sure that's part of the process. And when they talk from hell and so in religion, then it reminds me, okay, this has to be. And I can't do anything against it. It's not hurting like real fire, like material fire. This would be maybe at some people it's different maybe some suffer and really feel like burning and and that's for me but this is just i can't really describe it this is like burning but not with the pain it's just like my body solves or dissolves through a fire but i i don't really and i didn't make an extra meditation for that so there are also meditations for this dissolving of the body and you consider about a burial or so of your own body but this was not the case i really feel it from alone it appeared when i, wa I was very dark the last time really on the deepest point with the suicide thoughts and it was burning and burning all the days and when i tried to do something it burned even more and I wanted to clean the house and every action was really like burning my body parts but there could also be other signs uh, bodily signs which suddenly appear and don't have to do with a disease but in some cases also disease appear and this is the 11th and last point it is said that Therese from Avila had diseases she had chronic diseases for very long periods she couldn't leave the bed even for years before she came to enlightenment and also from other saints or enlightened people, it is said that they again and again in their life had phases of diseases which were so heavy that they couldn't leave the bed. But sometimes it is not that heavy. Also, there could be diseases which are bearable, but also very long. And it could also be that you have just certain symptoms, but not a concrete disease. And Sometimes symptoms appear and disturb you for a very long period, again and again, every day, and you go to the doctor and they don't have an explanation for that. This was in my case. I had for several years again and again swindle. I don't know what this was. And I went to several doctors from several branches or areas, and they looked at my heart and my lungs and everything, but there was no nothing. Also no hidden cancer or so, which also can cause certain symptoms which are not explainable with any other disease. There was really nothing. And later also the swindle disappeared, but I suffered from that for about four or five years. And this was almost every day. And this was when I left the house, but also at home. And when it appeared, I couldn't concentrate anymore on anything I really could not stand I was I had to sit or, or lay down I had to relax then and so you find your ways how to deal with it but it's not wrong to go to the doctor you can go to the doctor also 
but when you are in a dark night, you will wonder when they don't find a solution. Okay, it's not always part of the dark night. Lots of doctors in lots of cases which have nothing to do with the dark night or with enlightenment can also don't find a solution. But it could be also a sign for the dark night. When there were some points which really fit to you, when you can find yourself in five or six points minimum, then it could be that you already are in the dark night. And with the help of the books that I read and the knowledge which I explain here and the knowledge from my own experience, I hope that it can help you on the path to enlightenment and go through this kind of hell of dark night. I wish you all the best. Stay strong and trust it is a good thing. And at the end, everything will be good, it will be the best. It's just a part of a bigger thing. See you in the next video. Bye.